Hi everybody, welcome to my homestead and welcome to my channel. In this video, I'm going to be going over something interesting. Uh, this is going to have to do with the four angels waiting to basically destroy the wicked and bring judgment upon the earth. It's going to have to do with the 144,000 and seals and statements from Wilford Woodruff and uh, Joseph, uh, Joseph Fielding Smith. And uh, it just keeps coming. Like I... You know, I've been a member of, my, of the church my entire life, and I thought that I knew these things pretty good. I've read books. I've read the scriptures. I've gone to seminary. I've gone to institute. I want to went on a mission. Um, I've watched all the other things, you know, stuff on YouTube, bought books at Deseret Book, so on and so forth, and it still keeps coming. <laughs> what? How much more is there? I'm about to show you what I'm talking about. Okay, so I'm in the Institute Manual uh, for the Old Testament. And I was in here for something else. Uh, I've already done those videos, and I happened upon this. This is while I was trying to figure out what those two crowns are in the temple. Okay, if we go over... and you're not, I don't know why I even go... Why I'm going to do this, but... If we go to the uh, second temple, to Herod's temple, you go up the steps here, you enter into the Ulam, which is this hall. And by the way, I spoke to somebody that actually helped develop this. This is a BYU program, and he said that they're going to be making an even more detailed one, and it's going to come out next year. So he told me to look forward to that. So anyway, the Ulam is this uh, kind of hallway here, and then up here it doesn't really show it here he said that they couldn't put in all the details they that they wanted to but up right about here somewhere or maybe it's like over here i'm not sure with the second temple you had these two crowns that were in these like little holes in the wall uh these like cubby type things <clears throat> and part of a priest's training uh, like a new and like a young priest is to go up a gold chain up here and then see the crowns and i was like what what? Why? Because I had never heard of that. It's just from a it's from an obscure passage in the Old Testament in Zechariah. Didn't really find out anything about it uh, useful, but it did lead me to this portion of the Institute Manual, Zechariah six verses one through eight. What was the mission of the four servants? Okay, so this is going to be interesting. This is going to be very interesting. First, why don't we go ahead, let's read the verses, okay? Just eight verses. The chapter heading says, Zechariah crowns Joshua, the high priest, in similitude of Christ. The branch who will come, Christ, will be a priest upon his throne forever. Verse one, and I turned and lifted up mine eyes and looked, and behold, there were four chariots out from between two mountains, and the mountains were mountains of brass. The first chariot were red horses, and in the second chariot, black horses, and in the third chariot, white horses, and in the fourth chariot, grizzled and bay horses. Now, if you've read the book of Revelation, that should sound pretty familiar to you, and we're going to get into that as well, but let's continue on. Then I answered and said unto the angel that talked with me, what are these, my Lord? And the angel answered and said unto me, These are the four spirits of the heavens, which go forth from standing before the Lord of all the earth. The black horses, uh, which therein go forth into the north country, and the white go forth after them, and the grizzled go toward the south country. And the bay went forth and sought to go that they might walk to and fro through the earth. And he said, Get you hence, walk to and fro through the earth. So they walked to and fro through the earth. Then cried he upon me and spake unto me, saying, Behold, these that go toward the north country have quieted my spirit in the north country. So, so what? 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 Uh, so we go over here to help us understand this a little bit better. And it says, the prophet Joseph Smith changed the phrase four spirits in verse five to read four servants. 
Okay. This major change is vital to an understanding of these verses. Servants of the Lord are priesthood holders who labor to bring about the purposes of God. The servants came from between two mountains, uh, two places where the Lord will judge the nations. So that sounds a lot like uh, the new and old Jerusalem, right? Uh, Zechariah, there's actually a lot of second coming stuff in this book. Um, in here, it's only kind of like alluded to, but... Okay, so those are the two mountains, um, two places where the Lord will judge the nations, which were made of brass, a symbol of firmness. According to Kyle in Delish commentary, uh, and there it is right there. The four servants went throughout the earth in chariots drawn by horses of different colors. See notes in commentary on Zechariah 1, 8. Okay, so I pulled that up. It's right here. What is the meaning of the different colored horses? Quote, a man riding upon a red horse is probably the angel of the Lord. See also introduction to Exodus. In this scene, enacted in the valley bottom, he is the protector of God's people. Aspects of the divine providence are represented in the colors of the heavenly scouts. Red depicts battle and bloodshed. White represents victory and peace. Okay, so it's like a battle, and then there's victory. Um, Sorrel, which is uh, speckled in the King James Version, i.e. reddish-brown, is the aftermath of confusion in the unsettled period after the end of hostilities. Okay, go back here, now that we've read that. The black horses, the only ones not previously mentioned... Uh, seem to represent death or mourning. Okay. John the Revelator also spoke of the four servants or angels who stood at the four corners of the earth. Uh, Revelation 7, 1 through 3. How about we read that? Okay. Chapter heading. John also sees in the sixth seal the restoration of the gospel, the sealing of the 144,000, and the hosts of the exalted from all nations. And after these things, I saw four angels standing on the four corners of the earth, holding the four winds of the earth, that the wind should not blow on the earth, nor on the sea, nor on any tree. And I saw another angel ascend from the east, having the seal of the living God, and he cried with a loud voice the four, uh, to the four angels, to whom it was given to hurt the earth and the sea, saying, Hurt not the earth, neither the sea, nor the trees, till we have sealed the servants of our God in their foreheads. And let me just continue. So don't 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 do anything to the earth until they're sealed. Okay. Well who? And I heard the number of them which were sealed, and they were sealed a hundred and forty four thousand of all the tribes of the children of Israel. Oh, oh, okay. So they're waiting, they're waiting. The the main angel, like the fifth angel is like, don't don't do anything until we seal the 144,000. Okay, that has to happen first. You wait. Once they're sealed, then we can go after that. Okay, then we can go. Once the 144,000 have been sealed. Okay, keep that in mind. That's going to be important in just a second. Okay, on the 6th of December, 1832, this is now two years after the church has been organized, uh, the Savior told the prophet Joseph Smith that these angels were crying unto him day and night for permission to reap down the earth and burn the tares. <laughs> I, I, yeah, I, I, would, I would be with them if I was there. I'd be like, yeah, can we please be done with this process? There's enough wickedness. Okay, let's uh, look at the reference there. So this is in Doctrine and Covenants section 86, verses 4 through 7. But behold, in the last days, even now, while the Lord is beginning to bring forth the word, and the blade is springing up and is yet tender, behold, I say unto you, the angels are crying unto the Lord day and night, who are ready and waiting to be sent forth to reap down the fields. But the Lord saith unto them, 
Pluck not up the tares while the blade is yet tender, for verily your faith is weak, lest you destroy the wheat also. Therefore, let the wheat and the tares grow together until the harvest is fully ripe. Then shall ye first gather out the wheat from among the tares, and after the gathering of the wheat, behold and lo, the, te- the tares are bound in bundles, and the field remaineth to be burned. We did a video about this because there's a, a, there's a few different times that um, the wheat and the tares parable comes up. Uh, both in the New Testament as well as the Doctrine and Covenants. And um, it's it was clear through that investigation that uh, through Joseph Smith translation and then as well as looking at modern day revelation that first the wheat are gathered and then the tares are gathered. Um, but essentially it's kind of happening like simultaneously. Um, but technically wheat first and then tares afterward. Okay, so... This is what they're wanting to do. They're wanting to go through, bind up the tares, burn them. Uh, no, no, it's not time yet. Their faith is still weak. We need them to grow, get stronger. All right. Zechariah 6 verse 7 states that the angels could not go forth upon the earth until given permission by the Lord. <clears throat> So what did that say? And the bay went forth and sought to go that they might walk to and fro through the earth. And he said, get you hence, walk to and fro through the earth. So they walked to and fro through the earth. Okay. Now, 61 years after the revelation in section 86 of the Doctrine and Covenants was given, President Wilford Woodruff declared that the Lord had released those destroying angels and they were then upon the earth separating the tares from the wheat in preparation for the burning that would soon take place. That will soon take place. We're talking about Wilford Woodruff. Uh, that was like a million years ago, fall intents and purposes. Um, Wilford Woodruff declared that those angels have been released. What what does that tell you? What does that tell you? Going back here to <clears throat> Revelation. The angels, they want to go down. They're crying with a loud. They want to do it, but they're like, nope. No, you cannot go down first. First, the 144,000 have to be sealed. That has to happen first. So, if Wilford Woodruff is saying that they have been released, what does that tell you about the 144,000? Especially in light of this entire freaking playlist that I've done about it. Let me pull it up. Just time and time and time again, uh, it's being refuted. There's people right now in the church that are waiting for the 10 lost tribes to come literally in the, like a main group. And then what only then once that happens, then uh, 12,000 will be called out of every tribe and sealed and they'll be become super missionaries uh, is how the theory goes. But that's in conflict with this revelation from Wilford Woodruff. And it is a revelation because I'll show you. That's what Joseph Fielding Smith says. I'm about to read it to you. I'm pulling up the playlist though, right now. <coughs> I, I've done like a billion videos so far on the 144,000. We've talked about Jewish numerology. We talked about this man, Zadok Judd, Judd, who in his patriarchal blessing, he was called as one of the 144,000. Um, we, we've gone in depth, okay? If you put a comment about the 144,000, about the 144,000 in the comments section, I'm probably not going to, like if it's in support of, no, it hasn't happened yet, I'm not going to respond to it. Just go watch this playlist because I can't keep like, rehashing everything that I've already pulled out everything, all the different statements and things that I've found. You just go to this playlist and here's the latest one. 
Let, let's continue reading. So Wilford Woodruff declared that the Lord had released those destroying angels. It has happened. Quote, God has held the angels of destruction for many years, lest they should reap down the wheat with the tares. But I want to tell you now that those angels have left the portals of heaven, and they shall stand over this people and this nation now, and are hovering over the earth, waiting to pour out the judgments. And from this very, they put it into italics here, and from this very day, they shall be poured out. From this very day, they shall be poured out. Calamities and troubles are increasing in the earth, and there is a meaning to these things. Remember this and reflect upon these matters. If you now, for the people that like to scare people, the fear mongers, or the people, if you've been affected by the fear mongers that are out there, look what look at what Wolf, Wilford Woodruff says, a prophet. He says talking to us if you do your duty and i do my duty we'll have protection and pass through the afflictions in peace and in safety there's always you always go to these little facebook groups that are focused on the second coming and i'm not going to paint with a, a broad brush but because there's a lot of really good things that come up on there, uh, on all of them. You know, they keep on top of current events as well. Very good job. But there are people that like to get on there and like to be all afraid and scare other people and make it seem like the, the world is coming to an end in like, um, like in the sense that we're all going to be wearing like hazmat suits or uh, everybody's going to be starving. There's going to be... Uh, nuclear war is imminent and you know things that scare people and i've never once ever heard any prophet or apostle ever say to be scared and wilford woodruff right here is saying <clears throat> we shall pass through in peace and safety and that's not to say like don't it's not to be i'm not meaning to be naive like bad things can't happen like they can and they have been happening man this is before World War One and World War Two happened. <laughs> okay, bad things have happened, but this is what it looks like. We are in it, right? We are deep into it, according to this. Look at the year eighteen ninety four. From this very day, they shall be poured out. These four angels are now reaping the world. And they've been doing it for over a hundred years. So if you think that this is something that, oh, we're still waiting. Oh, they're just waiting for the, the go ahead to No, It's been happening since 1894. And you can see it when you look at history, world wars, cold war, diseases, destruction, and especially, and it's like getting even worse right now, not trying to scare anybody. But it's been happening. So if you're like anticipating, because uh, I, I always love the comments, oh, we haven't seen anything yet. Uh, no, yes, we have. We have seen something yet. We've seen a lot. And that's not to say it's not going to keep getting worse, but no, yes, we have. Now, President Joseph Fielding Smith said, quote, now, I want to make some comments in regard to the statement by President Wilford, or, or, sorry, the statement by President Woodruff uh, and this parable, the parable of the wheat and the tares in section 86. The Lord said that the sending forth of these angels was to be at the end of the harvest. Okay. The sending of the angels is at the end of the harvest. When were they released? Oh, 1894. 1894. So what does that tell you about how far into the harvest we are? And then he continues, and the harvest is the end of the world. Now, that ought to cause, cause us some very serious reflections. <laughs> and the angels have been pleading, as I have read it to you, uh, before the Lord, before the Lord to be sent on their mission, until, oh, look at this, 1893. 
So add one more year. That's how long they've been doing this. Until 1893, the Lord said to them, no. And then he set them loose. You guys, we have an actual date of when those angels were released upon the world. We have a date. You have two prophets here. The one that actually received the revelation, President Wilford Woodruff, and then you have another prophet that's backing him up. According to the revelation of President Woodruff, the Lord sent them out on that mission. And Joseph Fielding Smith is calling it a revelation to President Woodruff. Uh, What do we gather out of that? That we are in that time. We are at the time of the end. This is the time of the harvest. This is the time spoken of, which is called the end of the world. You want to know what the end of the world looks like? Uh, You're living it. Uh, Everyone here has been living it for our whole lives. Uh, Unless there's somebody listening to this that was alive in 1893. We've all been living it. This is what it looks like. Okay. Now, I wanted to add one more thing on here. (coughs) Since we were talking about the horses, because for some reason... uh, now, I, I get it because the book of Revelation, it can get kind of confusing if you're just like raw, just raw reading it without having read section 77 of the Doctrine and Covenants, without listening to the commentaries of prophets, apostles about it. It's confusing. But let me show you something. This is another one. Um, I've heard this before. There, There's like members of the church that are like, oh, I think that you know, Russia, what's happening with Russia. They're the red horse. Oh, and I think that, um, you know, this disease is the black horse or whatever. Uh, uh, Hear me out. Okay. Here we are. Revelation six. What happens is you have a seal that is opened and then a horse comes out. And then the second seal happen is opened. And then the red horse comes out. The third opens, and then the black horse comes out. The fourth opens, and then the pale horse comes out. What do we know about the seals? Well, let's look at Doctrine and Covenants 77. And thank goodness we have this. This is the question and answer section about the book of Revelation. And verse 7 says, Question, what are we to understand by the seven seals with which it was sealed? Answer, We are to understand that the first seal contains the things of the first thousand years and the second also of the second thousand years and so on until the seventh. So uh, going back here. Okay, so the first seal is open. So that's the first thousand first thousand years and the white horse comes out. And then the second seal of the second thousand years, the red horse comes out. The third seal is open, and then the black horse comes out, comes out, and that's the third thousand years, and then the fourth. These have already happened, these horses. This is not something that's going to happen in the future. They have already happened. And uh, I've, I've done a video about that, actually, if you want more detail, because there's a lot of commentary on this. Um, I'll type in horse. See if I can find it. Yeah. What are the four horsemen in the book of Revelation? Do they have anything to do with the last days? Spoiler alert. The answer is no, they don't. Um, and this has been talked about very plainly by, by various people, various general authorities. So... So uh, check that video out. Check out my playlist about the 144,000. But this is like the most solid thing that you could possibly say about the 144,000. You know, you read it. You're reading the book of Revelation. Let me just do it one more time. So we're in chapter 7. 
John also sees the sixth seal, the restoration of the gospel, the sealing of the 144,000, and the host of the exalted from all nations. Here you have the angels waiting. A fifth one's like, no. First, the they we have to seal the 144,000. And then after that, the 144,000 are sealed. And then it's like, ah, okay, there we go. Now you can do it. And um, it actually says that... Where was it? Revelation 13. No. Where'd it go? Where did it go? Anyway, it doesn't matter. They've been released. Wilford Woodruff said that they've been released. That means that the 144,000 have already been selected. And there's people that like to read that literally. You know, that that's where you get this whole thing. No, the, the, the main body of the 10 lost tribes, they have to come. And then 12,000 will be selected. And then they will go uh, into war zones where mortal men cannot go. They're, they're going to be the hunters. And we've already gone over that scripture, by the way. That's not what that scripture means, the fishers and the hunters. It's not. I've gone over that in the last, I can't remember how many videos ago, but it was recent. Um, oh, here it is right here. So in Revelation 9, and the four angels were loosed, uh, which were prepared for an hour, a day, and a month, and a year for to slay the third part of men. That is already underway. And this, chapter 9, comes after the, the 144,000 are selected. Okay, Wilford Woodruff declared verse 15 of chapter 9 uh, completed or fulfilled, and specifically as of 1893. Now, I'm not wanting to like make anyone feel stupid or dumb, you know. I didn't know about this until just now. It's taken me doing a YouTube channel to find all these little details, and it makes me wonder, what else are we going to discover through this process? I don't know how long I'm going to do YouTube for. At this point, it's uh, basically become my job. Uh, <laughs> it's overtaken my graphic design, and I'm fine with that because this is the best job ever. <laughs> I get to dig into all the things I've always wanted to know, get into the nitty gritty. Um, so, so where do I stand? Okay. When it comes to the, the 10 lost tribes, I do not, as you know, I do not believe that they are in a main body. I'm putting together a spreadsheet where we are chronologically chronicling every instance that I can find of somebody in authority talking about the 10 lost tribes. And so far, the pattern is in the earlier church, they believe that they were in a main body. In more recent times, no. Um, I did watch something re recently by, oh, what's his name? Hiram, Hiram Andrus or something like that. Um, Hiram Andrus, LDS. Yeah, this guy right here. Um, and he was of the belief that, I, I don't know exactly, it says here, was a scholar, teacher, lecturer. So he's not a general authority, but uh, that doesn't make his opinion, you know, invalid per se. But he was he was arguing for um, the 10 Lost Tribes. And I'm going to do that video in just a little bit, and then we'll put it on the playlist. I am not biased. Just because I have an opinion, that does not mean that I'm like pushing for that opinion. I am going off of what I have found, right? And so far, what I have found is that it seems like that was a misunderstanding of the early church um, among some, maybe not all. Uh, I can't say that authoritatively. So that's why, because there's conflicting statements between different people. All I know is that there's a more modern and then early church division on this subject, generally speaking. So all I can say is that I personally believe there is not 
but I'm not going to say that there's not. If the, if it happens, then that's going to be really cool. But I think what I can say with certainty is that they are not associated with 144,000. And the reason why is because, um, because of this, that in Revelation 7, the four angels, angels were waiting to do it, but they had to be sealed first. And Wilford Woodruff said, no, they're 1893. They're doing their business. So either that means that we don't understand really what the 144,000 is are. And I think that I do. I explain it here in my playlist. If you put a comment, I'm not going to respond. That's why I'm doing a YouTube channel. Watch my playlist. Um, so either there's a misunderstanding. Uh, if there is a main group, then maybe they have been selected and uh, whatever. But I don't think so. I don't think so. So I think that the 144,000, it's mostly referring to people that are doing the work of exaltation as described, people that work in the temple, um, high priest. It, it, pro it probably also includes all general authorities and uh, people or uh, like mission presidents and so forth. And I don't think that it's a specific number because this is how they liked to communicate in those days was with numbers because they used numbers to put ideas into your mind to, to, exp to explain things. Like here in Zechariah at the very top, do you think that they're literally talking about two mountains of brass? No, they're not. They're not. Do you think that they're literally talking about uh, an exact number of angels? Do you think that it's really four angels and that's it? That's doing everything? Probably not. Maybe there's like four divisions of angels. Maybe there's like four leaders among the angels. Who knows? But um, anyway, I feel like I'm just kind of rambling at this point. <sighs> I know that there's going to be people who are like, yeah, 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 yeah. and um, just a warning. If you, if you're rude, I will block you and I will never have to hear from you again. And then if you want me to unblock you, then send me an email uh, saying, oops, sorry, I didn't mean to be rude. Uh, can you unblock me? And then I'll do it. Uh, but guess what? That hasn't happened yet. And uh, I get the feeling it's never going to happen, but we'll see. Okay, that's going to be it for this one. So if you haven't already, please make sure to subscribe, like this video. If you liked it, put your thoughts and opinions down in the comments below. Please be nice, please, especially if you're a member of the church. That's what we do. We're nice. Um, please also make sure to share this with anyone that would find this interesting. I, I would think that most of the church would find this interesting. And I'll talk to you guys later.